Whenever you are ready, as long as it's in the next 30 seconds. Okay. Oftentimes, many of us have been put in a situation where somebody might say something to us that we don't particularly like. You know, sometimes your boss might give you a comment that you're not too fond of, or a teacher, or something like that. And automatically, your first response is to kind of give them a snappy comeback and to just say the first thing that comes to your mind and kind of show them that, you know, they can't talk to you like that. But sometimes it's better for you to just walk away from the situation and think about what they said and kind of take it into consideration and just walk away. So Robert Burns said, when the going gets tough, the smart get lost. Um, this may be difficult for many people to agree with because, you know, like I said, oftentimes when you're put in that difficult situation, you don't want to just walk away from it. You want to fight you know, instead of flight. So, but... Like I said earlier, it is easier sometimes to just walk away, think about what the person said, and maybe you know there might be a better way you can get them back, kill them with kindness or something. For example, I have to deal with this a lot at my work. My managers can sometimes really get on your tail about the tiniest things, but it's not always best to just give them a piece of your mind because you can get in trouble for that. You can lose your job or be suspended, so sometimes just it's better to let that comment slide and just show them that you can do your job properly and that they were wrong for criticizing you in such a harsh way. Or another situation where this might apply is, you know, right now we're in a recession, things are tough for a lot of people, but instead of just sitting around and complaining about how tough it is, you can get innovative, get out of that hole that's keeping you down and come up with a business idea or some kind of endeavor that'll keep you occupied and keep you successful during these tough times. So that's another situation where that might apply. You know, a lot of people, for example, if you're unemployed and stuff, you might always say, oh, you know, I can't find a job or anything like that. But if you go out there and really, really look, you won't, A, have time to complain, because at least you're doing something with your time. And B, you never know. You might actually find a job. I mean, that's what happened with me. I didn't have a job for the longest time, and I went shopping with my family, and then I was just given a job application. And two weeks later, I was working and making a pretty good salary for somebody who's working part-time and going to school. So can't really complain about that. Just be innovative and take comments into consideration and always think you know, that there are better opportunities out there and better ways to handle a difficult situation than to just stick it out and deal with it and do your first response. Always analyze the situation before you decide to walk away from it and think of new and innovative ways to kind of deal with the problem. Um, I have a friend of mine who actually does the opposite. She always kind of tries to tough it out and give her first response and stuff, and that has gotten her in so much trouble over the years, you know, with teachers, with her previous boss, with any kind of situation. You just kind of have to let the anger settle or whatever it is that's bothering you settle and then think of a better way to get out of the situation. Because, you know, believe it or not, being, you know, a smart ass all the time doesn't work out as great as you would like it to work out. It works out better in your head than it does in reality. So, thank you. All right, well, I had like the visualization that you started with, and you had an okay transition to the uh, topic that you talked about, and I thought you came up with a pretty good point of view on that subject. There's not really a preview of what the content is going to be. Uh, your secondary examples, they are distinct, they are organized. I'm not exactly sure what the, a couple of them have to do with the uh, thesis that you originally started with, but you found some interesting things to talk about. A couple of them could use a little more detail. You mentioned your friend, for instance, uh, but we don't 
don't get any detail about what kinds of things uh, they've said or uh, problems that they've run into. Uh, you, you kind of talk about innovation, and I'm thinking, well, if you've got an example of somebody doing something like that or it's something that you've done yourself, and the closest you come is finding the job, which I thought was a good illustration, uh, but it, there's not a lot of detail to it. Uh, the presentation, I think from the very beginning, your voice is very effective. You project pretty well. There's good emotional variety. It sounds uh, uh, pretty warm and uh, engaging with the audience. Everything's paced very smoothly. Uh, you have good animated gestures. They seem to be descriptive and purposeful for the most part. Uh, your facial expressions are also pretty solid. Uh, you see, you're, you're friendly, you're talking to the audience, you want them to be engaged with you, and your eye contact I thought was excellent. The body movement I think is a little bit problematic, not a huge issue because you do stand very confidently, but you do stay in that one spot the whole time, and I'm not sure, you know, I'm not, I don't want to encourage pacing too much, but I do think sometimes stepping up or making a, a change in your orientation a little bit more would show that you were uh, a little bit more confident. I didn't think that there was a problem with it. That's just something that maybe uh, if you relax a little bit, you'd come up with some uh, things that would be more illustrative of your confidence. Um, oh, and then I did think that the conclusion of the speech was a little abrupt. You had those ideas, there was an internal structure, you had appointed originally, and then you just you sort of just finished without any summary or review or even a reminder what the point was. And that, I think, was a little bit of a disappointment after the effective job that you'd done earlier <coughs> in the speech. Thank you. All right, well, Josie is our last speaker, and there's nobody else, is there?